here is a solution for your first question on representing lines in different forms so the question is a grade 9 student gives you the line y equals to minus 1.5x plus 3 from R2 identify and describe four new ways of expressing this line now while answering this question I want you to understand the topic and I'm taking this opportunity to really introducing you to vector equation of lines in different forms so so I'll make an attempt to describe it at length and you should follow this so that you can understand each and every aspect of writing vector equation of line in R2 so we'll start with sketching the line so here we have a line in XY plane that is R2 right so the equation of the line given to us is y equals to minus 1.5 which I can write as minus 3 over 2 right x plus 3 now this line truly means that there is a y-intercept of 3 which is let us say 1 2 3 here and the slope of minus 3 over 2 so in case we want to draw this line on the Cartesian plane then how should we do it so the method which we have learned is first point is the y-intercept and then we go minus 3 down and to right to get the next point so we get 1 2 3 down and 2 right so we get the next point and then to get the next point we could either go first 2 to right and then 3 down it means the same thing right so 1 2 and then 1 2 3 now if I join these three points then I get the required line isn't that so so that is how we have learned what lines are so I'm joining these three points and I get my line so this equation is represented by the equation y equals to minus 3 over 2x plus 3 and as you can see this is the equation in slope intercept form which a grade 9 student fairly well understands now we are learning vectors here we represent the slope which is minus 3 over 2 as a direction number and we say well the direction number is how many units do you go to right and left to get to the next point as we did here right so you saw one two units to the right and three units down best way to indicate direction number is always to go from the origin right so we can go two units to the right and three units down so one two and three and if we join this we get a direction of the line so that becomes my direction of the line and I'm going to represent this direction as let us say m in vectors and I will write this as equal to 2 towards x and minus 3 towards y so it becomes 2 minus 3 now with this direction vector I can actually represent each and every point on this line see how so we can start from let us say here which is a point given to us and we say our line R is equals to this point which is 0 3 plus next point which is you need to add 2 minus 3 the direction vector so we'll write 2 minus 3 so that gives me the next point and to get the very next point which at with an integral multiple for this number you add it once again and to get the very next point another time so like that you can get a lot of points on the line you know line is continuous and it has set of points infinite number of points and those belongs to set of real numbers so they all belongs to set of real numbers 
So in a way, we can get to all those numbers if we multiply this by something which belongs to the set of real numbers. We call this parameter. So this is that t, which when multiplied with the direction number, gives access to each and every point on this line. Do you get it? And therefore, we get an equation of line, which we call as vector equation of line. So that is the vector form of our line. I hope you understand now why we write it like this. And in this equation, t is a parameter which belongs to the set of real numbers. And because of that, we can map each and every point on this line, right? So t could be negative, positive, or anything, right? Or even zero. So that is how you get one form of the equation. Now let me introduce you to the next form. So what I will do is, every point on this line is represented by x and y coordinates. As you can see here, what is my x coordinate? My x coordinate can be written as x equals to 0 plus 2 times t. And I can write y coordinate as y equals to 3 plus minus 3 times right? So that is how I can write my x and y coordinate. And this could be simplified and written as x equals to 2t and y equals to 3 minus 3t. Now like this, if I give different values of t, then I do get different points on the line. And therefore, this also represents the same line, right? So this form of equation is called parametric form of equation. In which we are representing the same line in a different form as in terms of the parameter t. Do you see that? So we got one vector equation and then one parametric form of equation. Now let's explore this parametric form next level. So what we will do is, we will try to find what t is from here, okay? So if we try to find what t is, then we know x is equals to 2t. So let me write this equation once again here. x equals to 2t and y is equals to 3 minus 3t. 3 minus 3t. Now from these two equations, I can write what t is. Now from this equation, let me change the ink. From this equation, we can find t is equals to x over 2. And from here, we can say t equals to y minus 3 divided by minus 3. Now this parameter t should be same for a point. Therefore, I can write this in another form which is x over 2 equals to y minus 3 over minus 3. So that brings us to the third form of representing the same line. And this is called the symmetric form of equation. So I'll call it symmetric equation for the line at the moment. All right? You will observe that denominator 2n minus 3 represents your direction number 2n minus 3. x minus 0, y minus 3. So these values represent a point on the line. So if I have to go directly from here to symmetric form, then I can always write this as x minus x0 over number 1 and y minus y0 over direction number for the y coordinate. Do you understand? So that is how we can write one form into the other. Now we'll talk about the third, the fourth form, which we'll call scalar or Cartesian form. And see how we get it. Just cross multiply this equation. So when you cross multiply, you get minus 3x equals to 2 times y minus 3. And we can bring all the terms together 
So what do we get? We get 2y. So we have minus 3x equals to 2y minus 6. And let's reorganize, write it in a very standard form. And that is 3x, we're bringing this term here, plus 2y minus 6 equals to 0. This form of equation is known as Cartesian form. Also known as scalar form. The importance of this form is that you can very easily find x and y intercepts as you did in standard form of equations for lines. Another thing which is to be noted here is that you get a normal vector. So a line in this form gives you a vector which is normal to the line. So here the normal vector is equals to 3 comma 2. 3 comma 2 is a vector normal to the given line. As an exercise you can check it. How to check? Dot product of these two should be 0. So that becomes your exercise, right? So things to do. What you can do is you can do dot product of 3 and 2 with our direction number 2 and minus 3 and see what you get. Is it 0 or not? So you will find it is 0. So that is the normal. So in a way, we started from here and we are back here. Standard form and then you know from standard form how to get slope intercept form. So it's full circle. But that brings us back to vectors. See how closely vectors is related with what we had been learning. And I hope this particular video helps you to retain all these things and do a good job. And I hope you appreciate it. Thank you and all the best.